Hey, so glad that you are joining us here at Harvest.247 on YouTube. Thanks so much for checking us out and making us a part of your day whenever and wherever you're watching from. Our church exists so that all people may know Jesus and grow with Him. We are in the middle of a Fruit Inspector series, and uh, so today we're going to talk about peace. Hey, but before we do, if you just uh, click that subscribe button and go check us out on Facebook and Instagram, we'd love for you to like and follow us there too. Keep up to date on all the latest info and see more things about our church, we would love for you to check that out. So I had a baseball coach, played baseball like nine months out of the year uh, back when I was a kid, and this is what he would tell us. He would say, practice makes prominent. It does not make perfect. I think a lot of us have heard that, practice makes perfect. Well, here's the thing I know. You're not going to be perfect. I'm not going to be perfect no matter how much we practice, but practice makes prominent. And this is what he would say. He would say, what we practice stays on the forefront of our mind and how we practice stays on the forefront of our mind. So practice is more important than even the game. He's like, because what we do in practice, if we do it over and over and over again, guess what? It's going to stay on the forefront of our mind. How we do it, if we do it with the same intensity, we're going to do it in the same way in the game. And you know this as well, because when you were growing up and you were having to do your multiplication facts, if you were like me, you got those sheets of paper and it was like a hundred problems on a sheet of paper and your teacher would say, all right, do all the even ones. So there's 50 and then the next day have to do all the odd ones or whatnot. If you're in school today and watching this, um, you still probably have to do a lot of repetition, whether it's long division, whether it's geometry or whatever. But we know that as well. Like whatever we practice stays on the forefront of our mind. And guess what? That goes with really healthy things and good things. That goes with not so healthy things and bad things. So whatever we practice is going to stay on the forefront of our mind. And so here's what I want to talk about today. If you are watching this and you struggle kind of mentally or you struggle um, kind of with your um, kind of thought process in your heart, there's anxiety and all that kind of stuff. I want to talk to you about one passage of scripture that will help you not only with your mind, but also with your heart. And here's the thing. It's going to try to help. I'm going to try to help you with your mind and your heart experience peace. Peace. And I bet there's somebody watching that you would love to have some peace because you're in the middle of a circumstance right now in a situation that has caused you heightened anxiety. Okay. It's a health situation. Um, it's a relational situation. Or you're in a situation where you're in a battlefield with your mind. You're like, man, I just need to have peace from these thoughts. I'm struggling with this. Uh, my self-esteem is low. Um, I don't think great things about myself or other people. And here's the thing. Your feeling and your thought process probably comes because you've practiced that thinking or that, that behavior for a while, or you just can't control it, and now it's become prominent. It's on the front of your brain. It's on the front of your heart. And there's a passage of Scripture in Philippians 4, 4 through 9, that I think can really, really help from a practical standpoint when it comes to trying to find about, out about peace. And so, have you ever thought that practicing could increase your peace? Maybe you haven't, but here we go. The Apostle Paul writes this. Paul's the writer of the predominantly of all the New Testament, and he writes this in Philippians 4, 4 through 9. He says this, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. So always be rejoicing. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. And then he says this. He, he speaks directly to that anxiousness. He says, do not be anxious about anything. And if I'm reading that, I'm thinking, but there's tons of things to be anxious about, right? I mean, are we going to go to war? Are the prices going to go up? I mean, how about a job? I mean, are we going to get sick? It's COVID. I mean, there's tons of things to be anxious about. But in everything, and this is what he says, he says, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And then he gives you a promise. And watch this. And the peace of God. So all that anxiety, all of that strife, all of that tension, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul says, look, all that anxiety you feel in your heart, all that anxiety that's filled your mind, 
all that worry, all that tension, all of that stuff, guess what? There's a promise for peace for those who pray, who do it with supplication, who are thankful, and who are rejoicing. And guess what? That peace is something that you and I are not going to understand because the peace is going to happen. The peace is going to dwell even when it shouldn't. And so peace is a center point. That's what I think. I think peace is a center point. It is something that you and I want to experience and have in the inner part of our being. And Paul writes that peace is needed to guard two things, the heart and the mind. The heart and the mind. The enemy, the world, and our flesh will attack our peace with distress. And the target of that attack will oftentimes be the heart and the mind. So the heart is attacked by breaking it. And when our heart gets broken over and over and over again, what resides oftentimes more than anger or resentment and all that stuff is this idea of hopelessness. When our heart is broken over a relationship, after broken relationship, after broken relationship, we become hopeless that, you know what, there's never going to be anybody for me. When our heart gets broken after being abandoned or sabotaged by friend group, after friend group, after friend group. And so it's hopeless. Nobody's ever going to like me. again. So our heart gets attacked by it being broken, and it leads to hopelessness. Our mind gets attacked by looking at confusion, anxiety, restlessness, wor- and its worries. And it projects out. So while our heart gets attacked by being broken, our mind oftentimes gets attacked with anxiety and confusion and restlessness. And there's worry. And that you are not going to get peace on your own. If we're struggling with this, we are not going to get peace on our own. There are some contributing behaviors, some kingdom-minded behaviors that we need to have in order to have that deep-seated peace in the center. Because without it, our heart's going to constantly be broken. It's going to be filled with hopelessness and whatnot. And our mind is constantly going to be in an anxious state. There's going to be restlessness that sets in and confusion. And God's hope for you is that you might have peace and surpass understanding. So I was thinking about peace, and I'm going to have a little fun with this today. And peace, um, you know, if peace was going to go to a party, right, if peace was going to go to a party, it needs some friends. Okay, it needs some friends. Peace isn't going to make friends because peace is kind of an introvert, right? Peace doesn't really say a whole lot. Uh, Peace is kind of calm. Peace is kind of reserved. And so if peace had a theme song, I think it would be, um, I get by with a little help from my friends. A a little help from my friends by the Beatles, right? It says, I get by with a little help from my friends. Now we're not going to repeat the next verse. We're just going to stick on that verse alone of the song. But peace needs some friends to get it to the party. Like it just doesn't come on its own. And the apostle Paul lists some things some friends of peace, and here's what they are. Peace has friends called rejoicing, prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. That's that group, that friend group of peace. Peace runs with those, and if those things aren't present, peace isn't coming to the party. Peace isn't going to reside in the center point. Peace isn't going to get into the heart. Peace isn't going to get into the mind because it needs some help because it's a little timid. So let's talk about its friends a little bit. The first friend is rejoicing. Rejoicing is the loud friend. You all, you all know, if you, if you have a group of friends, it's the loud friend. Rejoicing, everybody loves rejoicing. Like they walk in and everybody's all rejoicing and it's just all over the place and rejoicing is loud. They're the fun friend. It's the loud one. It's the worship. It's the praise, right? It's rejoicing. People love it. So. When people start rejoicing, rejoicing helps open the door and says, hey, let's go to the party. That's rejoicing. That's the friend. It's the fun one. So peace is like, okay, I really don't feel like going, but okay, I guess, I guess we'll go. And rejoice is like, let's go. Bust in the front door. First one there. Woo! Might even be the party host. That is rejoicing. So peace runs with rejoicing. You want some peace? You got to rejoice. You got to worship. We believe that. We believe that worship isn't a style, it's a decision. It, we believe that even in the anxious place, even in the hopeless place, that we can still choose to worship and it'll bring about a rejoicing. 
But that's not the only friend. Another friend that peace runs with is prayer. Now, this is the friend you need, okay? <laughs> prayer is the responsible friend. You know, like you got rejoicing who's like, let's, let's do this, let's do this. But you've all got the, always got the responsible friend, right? Like the cautious friend. Like, well, maybe, maybe we shouldn't stay out so late. Maybe we shouldn't drive so fast. Prayer is that responsible friend. This is the friend you need, right? You don't always call prayer. <laughs> but he is there when you need him, right? You've got that friend, you don't call prayer. You don't call that friend to get advice because you know you know what that advice is going to be. But when you need it, you call on it and it's right there, right? You That friend. Uh, when you're in a bind, you call on prayer. Uh, prayer is consistent. Prayer is responsible. And prayer keeps everybody in line. you got that friend, don't you? you got that friend. Rejoicing gets a little out of control and that friend comes by and says, hey, 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 calm down. That's prayer. So peace rolls with rejoicing, which everybody loves, and is, it is the life of the party, but it also runs with prayer, who's the responsible one that's kind of like, hey, just, just calm down. Just calm down. And yeah, if you ever need me, just call on me, and I, I'll be there for you. The third friend is supplication. This is the humble friend. Nobody knows what supplication is. <laughs> Nobody knows what supplication is. But this is just the humble friend, right? you got to have the friend that keeps everybody humble, right? Doesn't get let the group get too braggadocious. Yeah, I know that was fun, but remember this. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know that this happened, yeah, but, but, right? This is the friend that puts everybody in their right place, right? It's the humble request is supplication, right? It's the humble request. That's what supplication is. It's saying, God, would you please? Hey, I'm submitting underneath your lordship. This is what I would like, but your will be done. That's, that's humble. And there's peace knowing when we're in our place, right? Like a lot of times the anxiety and distress of our mind comes when we're trying to be in a place we don't need to be in. If you just stayed in your lane, you'd be good. So supplication is that humble request. It's the humble friend. And then finally, there's Thanksgiving. Now, Thanksgiving is really close with the rejoicing. Right? Thanksgiving is close with the rejoicing. It's not as loud, but it's not that shy either. Thanksgiving is overly optimistic, and it's annoying. Have you ever been around that overly optimistic friend, and it's just annoying? It reminds you all the times everything turned out okay, right? And humble, and prayer, like, yeah, but remember this, blank. But aren't you thankful that it didn't happen that way? Or aren't you thankful we got out of that? Uh, let's be thankful. The last situation didn't turn out how it should be, but we should be thankful uh, that it turned out okay. Uh, right? And so thankfulness reminds us of God's faithfulness. It reminds us that, yeah, that, that place back there, yeah, that was a dark place. Yeah, that place back there was a lonely place. Yeah, that place back there was a, was a hopeless place. But God. That's what thankfulness does. It looks back and it applies what happened to God's faithfulness in the past and applies it to your present. And so when we're talking about peace, what Paul says is that peace needs a little help from his friends. Peace has got to have rejoicing, the loud friend. Peace has got to have that worship. Uh, peace has got to have that prayer, that, that call upon the Lord when you need him or all the time, always be praying, right? Um, uh, peace needs supplication. Peace needs some humility to go with it. And peace needs some thanksgiving that when we're in a tough situation now, we look back and see how God brought us through back then so that we can be thankful now. And, he, and he's saying that, that through these behaviors, through these things, that we will find peace. Because peace is the last one in the party, but peace is the last one to leave too. You, you, know, you know this, right? Everybody else is ready to go, and then all of a sudden peace is over there holding court with four or five people, talking to them, having a conversation. Oh, no, no, I'm not ready yet because I'm, I'm spitting wisdom over here. No, no, I, I'm not ready yet. I'm calming things over here. No, I, I'm not ready to leave now because I, I, I've kind of taken up a spot. I've gotten comfortable now. But, but, but it needs some help to get to the party. But once it does, once it resides in the center, it's really hard to go. Because peace surpasses the understanding. That's what Paul writes. He says it past surpasses understanding. You're going to have peace in certain circumstances that you should not have peace in. 
You're going to go through things and experience peace and all of your other people are going to look and be like, how do you have peace in this? And you're like, because here's the deal, because I've been rejoicing, I've been praying, I've been staying humble, and I've been thanking God for what he's done and what he's about to do. And so now I have peace that is un under, it's not understandable in a difficult situation. And you know what the peace does? It guards your heart and it guards your mind and it does it in Christ Jesus. Because here's the deal. Peace, the peace of God is supernatural because it defies understanding. The peace of God is supernatural because it defies understanding. So, peace is practiced. Peace is practiced. Remember, practice makes prominent? Peace is practiced. It's practiced through rejoicing, it's practiced through prayer. It's practiced through supplication. It's practiced through thanksgiving. It's practiced in difficult circumstances. It's practiced in good situations. Peace is practiced. It's, un it's supernatural. It's hard to explain. It's hard to understand, but it comes by through practice. Right? It's just practice. So, um, you know, anytime you go through a scenario or a hard thing, we have to choose to rejoice, to pray, to be humble. And to be thankful because peace is practice. It's a certain set of behaviors that when practice becomes prominent and when it becomes prominent, then the next situation and the next scenario that you get into, guess what? You're going to practice the same thing and guess what's going to happen? You're going to have peace. That is a promise that the Apostle Paul gives in Philippians. So let's break this down into two applications, okay? First thing, the, the way to supernatural peace is found through daily practices. Rejoicing, daily. Rejoicing, prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Paul says in verse 4, rejoice. In verse 6, he says, pray with supplication, meaning the humility, and thanksgiving. Right? Because peace needs friends. And so peace is practiced. It's supernatural, but it's found through daily practices. Why? Because peace is practiced. What's practiced becomes prominent. If you want peace to reside in your life in good times and in negative times, it starts with daily intentional practices. And Paul lays it out for us. So here's my challenge. This week, every day, instead of saying, well, I need to make breakfast, lunch, and dinner and all this stuff a part of my day, why don't you say this? Instead of doing that, schedule yourself and say, you know what I need to make part of my day? I need to schedule out a part of my day so that I can go and worship and rejoice. I need to spend a part of my schedule out a part of my day where I'm praying and in that praying, humbly asking God, right? Hey, God, would you please do this? But not my will, your will be done. And I need to schedule out some time to be thankful and to begin to thank God for what I, what I am thankful for. Because when that happens, when I begin to do that, when I begin to reflect back on what he's done, Paul says, I'm going to have peace. Peace is practiced. And the second thing is this. Change the way we think gives us a great opportunity to experience peace. So when you read Philippians and you read starting in verse 8, what Paul says is that whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, and excellent, think, think about these things. Because it's from the head to the heart is a slow drip. What we begin to think about in the head will slowly drip to the heart because what we think about impacts us so much. And peace is practiced. Rejoicing, praying, with supplication, humility, and thanksgiving. Being thankful for what God has done and what He is about to do. Peace is practiced and it's done through daily practices and it's done through how we think and what we choose to think about. I'll give you one quick illustration. A number of years ago, Sarah and I really liked a show called Criminal Minds. Very fascinating show, some of you may watch it, nothing wrong with it. However, Sarah started to get scared at night, she started to have some nightmares and things like that. And so what she said is she's like, I think we should stop watching Criminal Minds because what I'm putting in my brain, I'm thinking about these things that could happen and all of this horrible stuff. And so we just stopped, we just stopped doing it. 
right? It wasn't anything super spiritual. We just stopped doing it. We said, hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to choose to reject thinking about those things, and we're going to begin to change the way what we watch so we can change what gets put in our mind so we can change the way that we think so that the outcome is different. Guys, peace is practice. What gets what's practiced becomes prominent. If you practice other things, it's going to be on the front of your mind. But if you practice rejoicing and prayer with supplication and thanksgiving, and you begin to do it daily, and it becomes part of what you do and who you are, you're going to experience peace that surpasses understanding in good times and in not so good times. And everybody else is going to look at you and be like, why do you do that? And you're going to be able to say to them, let me take you to a passage of scripture and talk to you about what the Apostle Paul said. And of course, we can always have peace because we know that Jesus is with us. It is a promise that is given to us that He will give us. And so if you want to have a conversation about how to follow Jesus, what that looks like, what that means, we'd love for you to talk to your Harvest Home leaders about it. You can put comments down in the section. We can check those and follow up with you. We'd love to do that. But remember, peace is practiced. Peace comes to the mind and to the heart, and it surpasses understanding when we have it, and it resides in the center point. And it loves to stay there, but without its friends, it may not get there. We'll see you next time.